Welcome to Midnight Menu Plus One. I'm Ray Kanata. Our regular co-host, Margot Moss, has caught something wicked. We're pretty sure it's not Ebola, but it's bad enough that she is called in sick tonight. A first for her. So in her place, we are honored to have with us Dylan Field-Turner, Uptown's local drummer extraordinaire, music and film producer, and uh, food fanatic, one of, my, one of my best friends. So thanks for stepping in the gap tonight on extremely short notice, Dylan. Who that? Uh, glad to be here. Cool. Well, glad you're here. We're going to get to, you, uh, our listeners will get to meet you, uh, get well acquainted with you over the next hour. Friends, Midnight Menu Plus One is a food lifestyle show on the podcast network. It's NewOrleans.com. It's brought to us tonight by Petite Pet Care. While you're at work or on vacation, you don't have to board your pet. You can stay in the comfort of his own home right there for love and care when you're not there. Petite Pet Care. Find them at PetitePetCare.com. Uh, each week on Midnight Menu Plus One, Margot and I invite a member of New Orleans restaurant and food community to join us in a conversation and celebration of our local food. And we invite uh, and we invite this special guest to bring along a guest of their own, a Plus One mystery guest. We never know who the Plus One's going to be. Sometimes it's a friend, a neighbor, a family member, a fellow restaurant, colleague. But our special guest tonight, we're very excited. We do know who that is. And in, on Midnight Menu Plus One tonight, we have fine dining Dave Wright, uh, the driving genius behind Del Fuego Mexican Restaurant. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. Oh, pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so your restaurant is pretty new. Three months last week. All right, on Magazine Street in the heart of like a restaurant district there. Yeah, a very uh, burgeoning street. I think almost every uh, building is occupied on the, on the block now. I think there's one empty one, and we understand it's going to be a nail salon i believe oh we don't need any more nail salons uh from what i hear it's supposed to be a nice one okay well it's right near um napoleon a great spot yep. right near I, I i walk past it almost every day and i've dined there it's been fantastic but before we get into all that tell us like now you're from like the napa valley you're from california pretty much the other side of the world from new orleans how'd you end up here correct uh food <laughs> is exactly how i ended up here i was act- i grew up in northern california in the napa valley lived there all the way through high school uh, and went to college and, and kind of randomly started cooking and worked my way around some restaurants, California, Albuquerque, uh, and ended up at the Culinary Institute of America in New York. And I needed a place to do an internship. And a good friend of mine was working at Commander's Palace and hooked me up with a job for my internship at Commander's Palace. Wow, now uh, what year was that? That was 1998. 98. Yeah. So you started intern at Commander's Palace in 98. Yeah. And you ended up sous chef there, right, didn't you? Uh, I was one of the sous chefs, yes. I think my last technical uh, title was saucier. Okay. Under Jamie Shannon Under year, Jamie. right? Yes. Yeah, good, good, good year to be there. Absolutely. Jamie was a fantastic chef. A little bit after Emerald and a little before mm-hmm. Tori McPhail. Yeah, I actually worked under Tori for about six months after Jamie passed. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Great. Before so I now, on. how long was it from sush- from uh, from just getting your internship there up to um, the position that you had? I think uh, it was about two years before. Uh, I had a lot of experience for an intern. That sounds kind of quick <laughs> yes, for commanders, I, I, especially. I did. That's such a well-run machine and all. I'd spent uh, almost a year and a half working under Michael Chiarello at Trevigne in the Napa Valley, okay. and really cut my teeth there. And so, even though technically I was you know, coming into commanders as an intern, I, I had quite a bit of experience I, I, under my belt already. Hmm. Now, from there, you went where? You went to Giacomo's, Giacomo's, right? Yeah, I spent about four years at Giacomo's. Now that's that. a different kind of kitchen than the Commander's Palace. It's right? a whole different world. <laughs> it is a whole different world. Just as much fun, uh, but definitely a whole different world. A yeah. totally different dynamic. What was different about it? Uh, it's much more laid back. You know, it, in the kitchen at Giacomo's, you, you wear a ball cap and a, and a t shirt. And everybody kind of jokes around, and it's kind of loud, and just as busy as Commander's Palace right. for certain. But uh, and the the food, you know, what, once again, while just as good as Commander's Palace, just uh, completely different. Yeah, two very different cuisines. I and I worked there while, while Austin Leslie was still alive. Wow, well. amazing. Okay, so he that was, was the mentor a, for 
for for jock yeah absolutely and, and he and died right after katrina yeah, from an accident he, didn't he? he he fell through a roof and cut his leg and got an infection or something that wasn't what it happened that's what i heard i heard I, I may have this wrong but i heard a few months after katrina he got back into town he was working on his own roof he was in like a 70s maybe or something he like was, that wasn't he yeah. yeah and he was up there working on his roof and he fell through trying to put a tarp up he fell through and caught his leg on a nail didn't get treated and got like some kind of bad infection and died. I didn't. I didn't know that story. I'd oh, heard wow. that he had passed in Atlanta after the storm. Well, maybe mine's totally fiction. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know either. I heard it from Jock, but Jock, as you know, has a few cocktails, and I, I uh, sure. I heard it from him late at night. So maybe. <laughs> so maybe. Uh, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to have to check that after yeah. the show. Okay. I mean, maybe he went back to Atlanta and died there. Maybe they're both right. You know, maybe he got That's the possible. infection, went back there, still didn't go to the hospital. And That's very possible. But anyway, big Fictionalizing is, is key, Yeah, key he was going. a character, yeah. too. Let's Did add he some more come details. up with the uh, blackened? Uh, no, that, fish, that's, that is, uh, is that's Prudhomme. Older. It, yeah, that, Prudhomme. It's, it's I mean, attributed but, to Prudhomme. But Giacomo, or Jacques, he made that happen there at that restaurant? His, his black and red fish with the, uh, the spicy mm. crab meat hollandaise is one of the most popular dishes on the menu. Obviously, yeah, but not Austin. It, it, it was it Jacques that did that. You know what? I don't know. Because yeah. Giacomo's was almost close to 10 years in before mm -hmm. I started working there. Oh, wow. Okay. So the core menu was really already in place by the time i i, I yeah. started working there yeah. now how long now how long were you there almost four years i okay. worked there until i got them and crabby jacks back open after katrina uh and then it was time for me to move on and i went uh, a good friend of mine uh that i'd worked with at commander's palace had become the executive chef at new orleans country club okay and i went over there and got the job as that's the different than chef. the country club very different <laughs> very different. <laughs> which is a bathhouse <laughs> also very has different. great food though yes from yeah, what we hear yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i went there with kathy once when i was doing my food quest yeah. and i looked around and, I, and i didn't know it was a bathhouse and i looked around and i said like there's only dudes here like well, you're the only girl here and then i saw the pool area i'm like oh we should go check out the pool afterwards and i saw the security for the pool and it said clothing optional i thought oh wait a second different kind of place but i had a Great steak sandwich there. It was great. I, I've, but never you were, been, I've never been to that country club. Okay, but you've been to the more the uh, the more uh, the fancy pants. Yeah, one. button up uh, country club. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah, right. The yeah. New Orleans country club. Yes. That's where you were. You were executive chef there. Uh, banquet chef. Banquet chef. Okay, yeah. okay. And you were there for a few years, and then you said, "No, let me go do Mexican." Of course. Right now, you didn't do any Mexican all commanders. No, zero. No, They've I, never had any Mexican on the menu there. No, probably. Uh, ne probably not at Giacomo's either. Nope. And probably not too much at the uh, banquet for the country club, or you might have, you could have incorporated no, that. No, I mean, no? I think we had a couple of appetizers that you might call Mexican, but, you know, so you've flout, been, flout us. Were you, were you like appetizer. longing for this? Because I knew you had an, a Mexican-obsessed childhood, right? Tell us about I've, that. I've been obsessed with Mexican food since the first time I ate it, which I couldn't even tell you exactly when that was. I don't remember it. But I've always been obsessed with Mexican food. Did your mom used to like? She used to do you a special Mexican banquet it, it, every time for your birthday every year. It was my it was my requested meal on my birthday every. Now was that year. like American gringo Mexican? It was pretty gringo Mexican. Yeah, yes. so it was like it just, I, you know I still like a good gringo taco. I mean I've, I have a taco quest all over the South and Mexico. I spent some time in Monterey, not a lot, but I still when I got back to New Orleans, I was in Tulsa and Little Rock. And uh, there were great tacos in Tulsa and great tacos in Little Rock. And obviously, you're close to Dallas and all that. But you get back to New Orleans, and, of course, I miss Po' Boys when I was away. I was the guy that made Po' Boys in, in Tulsa. I would go ride home and get Leidenheimer bread and all that. And we come back, and I get here, and I can't find really great tacos anywhere. And then I found That's one, little, to change, huh? one little spot, it really is. Uh, yeah. one little truck on Claiborne, right at the right, right by Lowe's, right not not far from Krabby Jack's, which yep, is right by Lowe's. really great. And yep. Krabby Jack's was uh, is an old school po' boy. And everybody got all mad uh, right after Katrina. I remember because the taco trucks were showing them up. They were doing yeah. better Mexican food than a lot of the other places. That little taco truck is my favorite. Is, you know? Is it still parked there? Yeah. I heard they, did yeah. they, I heard they got Even run out of Jefferson Parish, but I, I, I didn't know. There maybe there no they're on the Orleans side. Now. Okay. But they, and they're uh, right by the gas station, and there's so much construction there. You have to pull in right. to a side oh, street. Oh, is that the gas station it. with my favorite sign in the entire city? Probably What's that? the one that says "laundry, tacos, yes. gas." Yes. It names off like six things that, is, that have no there. relation to uh, each other. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's sort of like the right across the street from you is the uh, Buddha Belly, right? That's yeah. uh, that same thing. It's laundromat slash bar yeah. slash yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, they have burgers too, I believe. Yeah, <laughs> pool. 
<laughs> it's, <laughs> exactly yeah, it's ridiculous. Right. So okay, so I, I've interrupted you. So you're um, so you so you're obsessed with Mac. You got this bug for Mexican as a little kid. Yeah, it's in just California. Been, it's been my favorite cuisine since I was a very young child. And you don't get to make any of it for 15 years or more. Now you have a chance. Now you're going to open your own place and you decide to make it a Mexican genre and you're going to do it, right? Yeah, I yeah. I, I thought it was exactly what I wanted to do because I, I've been cooking Mexican food nonstop for myself at home, uh, and really that's where a lot of the recipes got refined. All right. Uh, a lot of times I'm like, I, I want a burrito and I would make a big batch of, of pork tinga or stewed chicken verde or, or sometimes just ground meat with onions and, and peppers. And I would make a big batch of it so that I could make burritos all week long. All right. Uh, burritos is really what I'm obsessed with. Wait, <laughs> now wait, uh, hold that thought for That's a second. Good. Your plus one just sat down with us. Excellent. And we don't know who she is, but she looks very interesting. <laughs> Can Hi you introduce everyone. her? This is uh, Debbie Schatz, bartender All right. extraordinaire All right. and uh, owner of 45 Chop. Oh, nice. Hey, we okay. love 45 Hi Chop. Guys. We do too. <laughs> oh. Yay. It's yeah. tacos there sometimes too. It happens. I've, yeah. I've, I've prepared tacos for football games there yeah. before. That's nice. Yeah. I think I was there. Wasn't I there for the six mile uh, barathon? Wasn't one of the stops 45 Chop yes, this year or was. not? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was trying to think the last time I was there. That was just a few weeks ago. Not yeah. long. Yeah, yeah. Great. Well, glad to have you here. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, let's see. There's also, I see a bunch of beverages in front of us. And since you're a bartender, maybe you should be the one, or I don't know who should be the one, but somebody needs to mix us a drink now because I, I, I I'm think getting that's a I think that's a fantastic idea. I'd yeah. be happy to yeah. pour while Dave explains. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Does everybody need one? Of course. Yes. All right. You that's uh, that. six of each. That's the ice going in the cups, audience. <laughs> So we brought two of the signature cocktails from the Del Fuego menu. Um, one is the fire starter. All right. Uh, most of the cocktails on the menu, we're, we call it our bootleg cocktail menu because Shannon, my girlfriend and, and uh, partner at the restaurant, uh, we're in Mexico. We love to buy bootleg DVDs off of the street. <laughs> and yeah. we, we love doing it because you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> you might, we rented, uh, last time we were down there, we rented Machete, and it ended up being in Japanese with Spanish subtitles. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's great. And I like Machete. Awesome. Too. <laughs> so she came up with the idea of naming all the cocktails after movies. Nice. And she calls it the bootleg cocktail menu. So this is the fire starter, or cool. the, in Spanish, the movie is called Ojos de Fuego, all or, right. or Eyes of Fire. Oh, that sounds so much better. Uh, and it's a Reposado tequila that we infuse with jalapenos. And we make our own triple sec at the restaurant. No kidding. And wow. it also has lime. And you muddle a little jalapeno in there and throw a little cilantro in it. And you line the cup with a... Uh, oops. That's the sound of a container opening. Nice. With a little bit of cilantro salt. Oh, my gosh. Man. Okay. Dying for that. The cocktails at the restaurant are really fabulous. Shannon has done an amazing job with the cocktail menu. She really has. Nice. Yeah, we en we enjoyed the cocktails at the place. I you, had uh, yeah. uh, the Ojo de Fuego, as a matter of fact, last time I was there with Mary Lee. It's oh, nice. It's one of the most popular. Nice. Thanks. For Thank sure. I'll wait till. See, that's, I'm glad she's doing that. She's much, much better at it than I am. Oh. We got this. You're going to love it. <laughs> she looks like a pro. This is great. Yeah, that's nice. So Shannon also worked for Debbie at 45 Chop for almost five years. Oh, nice. Before okay. we opened Del Fuego. She actually uh, just quit recently to, to go full-time at, at Del Fuego. We oh, miss nice. you, Shannon. <laughs> the best. Awesome. It may be jumping ahead, but it, I've, I've, my office is right across the street from you. And I watched you develop Del Fuego for a good long time. It was almost a year. No, it was it's almost exactly a year and a half after right. we signed the lease before we opened the door. The day I saw tacos <laughs> are coming, we promise. Uh, I was, boy, I was really well. Excited. We had we had that sign that said coming. 2013 and we had to cross out 2013 and put 2014 we uh, promise but that's you come <laughs> that's okay there's one on st charles that'll go unnamed but it uh it has signs saying coming in 2009 and it was about 2012 it still <laughs> and so then he took it down and they put and by that time uh mayor landrew had been elected and they put 
Congratulations, Mayor Landra. I think that was maybe, I don't know if that was like a, a, a way of like uh, currying favor and they were taking right. so long. To, and, then, <laughs> and then it said, coming 2013, and now I know this is 2015. It keeps moving. Oh, man. So wow. it's been six that years. That is much longer than it, than yeah, it took so us. So don't yeah. feel too bad. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I was just, I was, I was mentioning before the show, I, uh, I, went, I, was, I walk past your place constantly. I've been, just, you know, wondering and wondering and kind of longing to find out. And I went by on uh, Mardi Gras around Carnival time, and one of my friends was in the front, and she seemed to know what was going on. I said, hey, when are they opening? She says, any second, you know? <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't any second after Mardi Gras. It was still a couple months after that. It was. Like, it was. That space, though, you know, was close. I don't want to say it was blighted, but it, was, it had a lot of work that needed to be done. A lot. It was a complete renovation. It was a complete overhaul. It was a complete overhaul. I, I, overhaul. I mean, I don't want to ask numbers, but you put a lot into that place. I did. It looks great. Every penny. And it's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> every, every penny. penny. Wow. And probably then some, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. All right. Cheers. 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 Yeah. Here, here. Here, All right. Thank you. Yeah. But it did. Oh, it. man, that's good. That's great. That is freaking unbelievable. Yeah. I love that. That's got so much going for it. And that, that would be great with, with Mexican, too. <laughs> and you would think the habanero would overwhelm everything, but it's just a nice finish to it. We actually uh, had to test infusing the tequila a couple times because you can really only leave the jalapenos in there for 24 hours. And oh. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you go longer so than that. you fish them back out again? Yeah, you, you fish them okay. back out. And what do you do with them after that? Do you, do you recycle them in a dish or something? Uh, you know what? That's a great that idea. That would be freaking awesome, wouldn't it? Like, That's a great idea. Yeah, a little bit of alcohol in the, in the jalapenos. Because we have pickled jalapenos Saber on the menu. Saber over there is giving me a thumbs up from the uh, gallery. <laughs> she thinks that's a great idea. We'll call it the Ray Ray. Right. Yeah, you got to call it the Ray now, though. There I, you go. I invented it just now. <laughs> <laughs> you got to work Ray in there somewhere. Ray strike. Thanks again. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, um, but we really concentrated on tequila on the that's menu. That's so good. And I, I wanted to have 100. That was my goal. 100? Yeah. Was to have 100. I thought it was a nice round number. It's three digits. Uh, and I was really surprised when we finally contacted all of the liquor companies. I, I could put 250 tequilas on the menu if I wanted, if I had uh, the room for them. Huh. And... I could do that, and we don't have anything on the menu that's not 100% agave. All right. I was adamant about that. If it doesn't have the word tequila on the bottle, which if it's not made with 100% blue agave, then it can't say tequila on the okay. menu. Uh, so you like it? You think everyone's quality? Every one of the every one of the every single one. Get, we yeah. don't have we don't have a junk tequila on the menu. Wow. Was it a struggle to get your liquor license? A bit. Yeah. Um, Everybody says it's harder the last few years than it used to be. And you know, honestly, a str I don't know if a struggle is the right word. It was time consuming. Sure. Um, but I actually sat down with Latoya Cantrell before the entire process started. I, I made an appointment with her. Yeah. And to sit down face to face. And so she knew who I was, and, and uh, she helped me all the way through. She was fantastic oh. all the way through. She really was. Are you in her district there? Uh, Del Fuego is yes. Oh, I, I, I didn't unfortunately, realize that. Oh, okay. I, don't, I don't live in her district because no, no. I bet the restaurant that was my vote. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I didn't realize that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm, I'm not was far fantastic. from there at all, and I'm Gidgey right here. But the di the districts are very uh, long and narrow, like kind of like our yes, like We're our right yards and our district, houses. Yeah. yeah, they're like yeah. shotgun houses. The uh, districts. But yeah, yeah it yeah. took about seven months. But it's more oh. of a pain in the butt than it was difficult. And I know that hasn't been everyone's experience. No, but I mean, I just. I took it step by step, and I did every step the way exactly the way I was supposed to do it, and I, I didn't have a problem. Well, you know what I hear? I don't know if you heard this, and this is maybe not a concern to you, but like I hear that it's a lot easier on the Magazine Street and on the main drags because there's been a push by the more recent city council to try to give a hard time to the places that are off the beaten path. The neighborhoody places, right? And it's a suburban sort of plan, and they're trying to push everything yes. into districts. So you were probably a little, you had a little easier because you're on Magazine Street. You're in, you're in what they want to focus on, rather than stuff that's set back a few exactly blocks. Right. You know, that's really getting exactly a hard right. time. We, yeah. we, I mean, they actually it, they said it in in the, yeah. the planning commission's report that we yeah. are we are exactly what the master plan for right. the city is looking. Well, that's for. good for you. I think it sucks for the city, but that's awesome for you, though. Uh, that's good. Yeah. And, well, and no, it doesn't suck for the city. It, it doesn't suck for the city that you had, didn't have a hard time. I just meant it sucks for the city that other people have a hard time. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it can be a problem. Yeah. You know, and we they there were provisos that we had to provide to, right. to, to get it. Right. Um, but like I said, we just followed the rules the entire way, and cool. it turned out really well for us. What well, brought you to so pick integral. that spot? Go, it, it is. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. It's Sorry. just so integral to the menu and everything sure. to have this. Yeah, how yeah. can you have a great Mexican place right? without yeah without a liquor license? It. That'd be yeah. insane. It'd and be what impossible. city council doesn't want that tax revenue? 
Right. Yeah. Well, right. some. You would, think, you would think. You would think. You would think. Ask a few people, though. If you yeah, go, that's like, not always the case, for sure. Yeah. You know. Well, that's, that's great. Okay, so tell us a little bit about you. I'm sorry we've been... Uh, well, I'm Debbie. We have 45 Chop, just around the corner from Del Fuego on Chapatulis. Mm -hmm. We're a little neighborhood bar. Great and, neighborhood uh, bar. I, great thanks neighborhood for saying bar. that. I love it. I feel quite comfortable there. Now you're the, you're the owner as well? Yes. I have a partner, Frankie Mazzani. Okay. Me and Frankie. We and took how long it have you owned it? It'll be eight years in January. Oh, that wow, we've that's been great. Open. All right, so you're really? in it for the long yep. haul. That's great. We started it's, paying yeah, rent eight years ago One of the finer ago, little bars month. in town here. <laughs> yeah, to me, that's like a quintessential sort yeah. of New Orleans bar, too. It's like that we sort of... We wanted that yeah. feel. We've always worked uptown. We've been in places like that. My fight is I scoot from, you know, we're camp in Bordeaux where my wife and I live gotcha you're close so we I scoot past you know Le Bon Ton <laughs> this is going to Rouse's to get dinner <laughs> right, right, right. it's and a great stop, like, I stop, stop I want to stop so I <laughs> come right down and you know past 45 chop and I've got to pass usually some sort of food truck and 45 chop yes and you know usually I'm in a hurry to get back home so I don't stop but sometimes I do and you wouldn't yeah. believe the lines at Rouse's no <laughs> you know, it takes tell so them all about long. it yeah. yeah you know sometimes it might be good to go and stop for a drink and you know, wait till the line goes down. Yeah. Well, fortunately, great Grits is off your radar. That's like I a can't block in. You miss Grits. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Grits is at the dog park, which is where we take <laughs> ah. bar, two huge dogs. Right. You can't go anywhere in New Orleans without seeing a bar. In no, front of you. I got to yeah. walk past two town. bars to get yeah, to Grits. Yeah, what a great town we live in. <laughs> it is. Wow. So, is. how long has 45 Chop been there? Because I've only so, been here nine years, so I, I, I only know yeah. it. You know. We've been there seven. Oh, really? Okay. I feel like They've it's been, been there since I got here. Okay. Oh, you've been there seven. But how long has yeah. 45 Chop been there? Well, we made it 45 Chop. Before oh. that, it was Shiloh. And before that, it was Club Finesse. Okay, oh, okay. I wish we had gotten to get a Club Finesse together. That was a fun place, too. <laughs> really? What was Club Finesse like? <laughs> Club Finesse was um, a carpeted... Carpeted? Um, kind of earlier evening kind of bar. Shag oh, right. carpet? Yeah, shag. Yeah, they yeah. had carpet in there? Oh, yeah, carpet, carpet in a bar. Yeah. I haven't even hey. seen carpet in a house in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of bar has what carpet? What I want to say, the best thing about 45 Chop was its Indian claim to fame. I mean, it's always been an Indian bar. It came up as the patio back really? in the day. And it's Indian bar, like Indian, like, like Dodd like Indian Mardi or Mardi Gras Indian? Indian. Oh, Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras. Like really? yes. How the hell did it happen? Yes. <laughs> well, Chapatula, <laughs> shout out. Oh, yeah, is it yeah, Mardi Gras yeah. Indian bar? Yeah. Oh, nice. So that's why we think it's Dog blessed and so Indians. comfortable yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most colorful people on the planet, like uh, Mardi Gras Indians, for the people that are listening and don't know what those are. Well, you do. You have a couple of Google those together now. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. Tell us about that. St. Anthony's, we do um, Mardi Gras Day. We open at 7 a.m. while Chapatulas comes up and gets dressed with us. They get dressed there? We do. Oh, yeah. Because they come to Le bon Ton later in the morning. That's yep, where yep. we usually hit them. We get the wild Chapatulas. They tend to get the wild Magnolias. It's oh. great. But it's really a really good time. <laughs> oh, we get the wild Magnolias. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we pay homage to that. Well, we might have to And we think down that's there. what makes it such a blessed spot. I, I've told people before. The Mardi Gras Indians alone are enough reason to move to New Orleans. Uh, if you're listening yes. and you live in one of those states in the middle of the country or on the or on the other end, you move here just for the Mardi Gras Indians. That and in, that's reason enough. It's one of the most interesting cultural aspects of the city, I agree. It's just absolutely, absolutely bizarre. It's, it's fascinating. Just as a drummer, they carry the rhythms that made all of the music in this country popular. Well, all right. it. the fa the fact that they make those costumes by hand that alone yeah. is now, what do they weigh? Uh, Anybody know? I've heard two. I've heard. Yeah. I didn't know that. I was going to say. These are the biggest. Yeah, no, okay. It's over 100. 90% sure. of our listeners that don't live in New Orleans have no idea what we're talking about. These Mardi Gras Indians, we don't know their origin, da 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 but we know this much. That these guys are the biggest badasses in the world, and yet they're not sissies, They even though they sew their own <laughs> outfits. Well, they're, they're master they're, sewers. Yeah, master yeah. sewers that spend Craftsman. their life learning how to do this. It's, yeah. inc it's incredible high art on its own, just making these costumes. And they basically, it's, it's, it's bad form to reuse anything. So they basically take everything apart at the end of, at the, end of the season and, start, and over. start all over again and make these incredible yeah. costumes that weigh 100, 200 pounds. And they're sort of like, I mean, they're kind of like gangs in a way, but they're social clubs. And social clubs is many closer, of them. Yeah, yeah. right. And well, the violence got taken out of it. Yeah, the violence is kind of, it's more It's more stylized now. It's yeah. more just sort exactly. of a... Thank you, Tootie Montana. Right, right, but exactly. But there's, there's, <laughs> there's, there's their homage to violence, though. Right, right, right. And yeah. It's part yeah. of it. I can't claim to understand it. And I've, you know, I'm not from New Orleans. I'm from Ham. And but you've but been around here forever. But been, grew up coming down here, and, you know, it, 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 it's always been that way. It's, it seems a little bit more like they're out more now. 
but they've always been around and it's just an amazing culture and it, the, to me the thing is the carrying forward of the rhythms you know that, that they do the, the 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 costumes are amazing but you know he's talking about the music of the indians which is like that one rhythm delineates to change the world pretty much you know So that's, you should have brought a drum with you, man. No, that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> they don't bring drums, you know. That's, that's true. That's, that's they right. They bring tambourines. Yeah. And, you know, well, it, it comes full circle because he was talking about Giacomo's and Giacomo's name for the Dixie Cup song. Yes. Ico Ico. That's Ico, right. Ico which is actually before that it was a, who was it? It was like um, Sugar Sugar Boy Crawford song or something I'm like that. I'm not qualified. But anyway, not it's a Mardi Gras Indian song yes. that became a top 40 song and nobody understands it. So it's like, hey now, hey now, Ico Ico. It's, yeah. it's, it's basically uh, trying it's, to explain. Explain. They it's call, it, it's call and response, isn't it? Call sure. response. Yeah. 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 That it, it's all the. Um, it all came out of you know all over here, but you know, Congo Square. Congo Square, yeah. 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 Most important musical. We spot lost. In the we lost history. Cosmo Matisse last night or last oh, week. Cosmo. Yeah. Who, uh, you know, he codified all that stuff for the United States. You know, it yeah. it, it, it it sat here and percolated in the early part of the in late and 1800s, early 1900s, and then. Cosmo started recording people, you know, and not just him, but before him, there's stuff. But, you know, there was a group of musicians. I was talking to our neighbor uh, is Joe Simon, who is the the uh, the president of the Musicians Union for a long time here. Joe but, Simon, who did the Sunday brunches at yeah, Commander's Joe, Palace. For, yeah. Does he still do that? No, he's he's wow. he's got a little congestive heart failure right now, but he's doing good. He's kicking. And, but he just I sit and listen to him tell stories and I went over and said you want to go to Cosmo's funeral he said I can't go but he started saying that kid yeah and yeah he was putting out a hit a week back in the day and not that he was the only one Dave Bartholomew or all they, that well, they but he was the only too. one with the technology right. to record it right. Cosmo was and he spent his money on that it's not like today when you know and now we're off the food thing yeah <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're pretty far from Mexico at this yeah. point <laughs> So now, what genre of uh, Mexican food uh, do you specialize in? Uh, we actually like to describe the restaurant as serving regional Mexican cuisine because I don't, I don't specialize in one certain region. I like to kind of reach from from different ones because the the cuisine of Mexico, I like to uh, equate it with Italy, kind of. Yeah, I was wow. just as you were saying, I was thinking of Amano. They used to say that about they'd do provincial Italian yeah, and would do I, regional Italian. Because yeah. the cuisine in the north of Mexico is so drastically different from the cuisine in the south of Mexico and central and each coast. Uh, you know, in the north you have the Sonoran Desert and they actually grow wheat in the north, so you have a lot more flour tortillas and they actually graze mm -hmm. cattle in the north. Uh, and in, in the uh, Baja Peninsula they grow a lot of olives and grapes. So you'll find a lot of olive oil in Baja, and you'll find a lot of beef dishes and, and wheat tortillas in the north. And then the further south you get, it's all corn. Huh. And so the further south you get, the fewer and fewer wheat products you'll find. Huh. Uh, and you'll find more and more pork and goat and lamb. And your, you know, your fat changes from olive oil to lard. Huh. And that's your, the predominant fat that they'll use in, in central and, and, and south. And then on both coasts, you have an abundance of seafood from oysters and mussels and clams. To oysters? Spider. I've never had Mexican oysters. They grow off, they grow off the entire Pacific coast. I mean, what do they coast. do with the oysters in Mexico? I'm, I'm completely ignorant about this. Like, same, what are they? All the same things they do here. They, so they, do you offer, you don't have oysters in here? We will. We really? Will as, soon as, they're, as soon as they come fully into season. I'll be there. Yeah, that we'll sounds do, really. We'll so, what do you? We're gonna do fried oyster what, tacos. Oh, fried oyster tacos. Oh, yeah. So, what region are you? Uh, uh, oh my gosh, on? I can't wait. I want that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> I'm ready for that. Yeah, oh. that sounds great. Um, I, I really like Oaxacan food. I was thinking Oaxacan uh, because Oaxaca is an amazing place, first of all, and Oaxaca. If you've ever been there, Old Town Oaxaca reminds me of the French Quarter. Okay. It's got old Spanish architecture. Ah. Uh. Everybody walks. They have this huge square called the Zocalo, which when you walk into it, some you might even think you're in Jackson Square, except for the fact that there's huge trees. It's got a huge church on one end of it, mm -hmm. and there's cafes, and there are street merchants everywhere. And then the food in Oaxaca is 
just out of this world. So for those without a geographical reference, can you give us one? Mm. Uh, Oaxaca would be southwest. Mm. Okay. Uh, and the geography of Oaxaca itself That's is a more mountainous region, isn't it? In the center, but it goes all the way to the coast. Okay. So, so way south. Yes, once okay. it starts to... Not to, Baja. Once, once Mexico takes that turn towards the east and starts to narrow out... Mm-hmm. So the other coast from, like, the Yucatan, basically, yes. no? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and actually, I, th- I believe, without having a map in front of me, I believe even further south. Okay, okay. That's uh, where all the hurricanes are kicking up this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. El Nino. Yeah. El Nino. Uh, Thanks, El Nino. Sorry, yeah. Mexico. <laughs> Sorry, Mexico. <laughs> Sorry, Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> we Sorry, don't wish that on anybody. But <laughs> we <yeah>. don't. <laughs> um, but Oaxaca, l- that can this bring us, that off. can segue us into this next cocktail. Yes, because, let's have the next cocktail. Because Here we Oaxaca. Go. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> yes. I've been staring at it. It's right because next we to actually, me. You know what? <laughs> Saber's <laughs> laughing again. Or, you know, this is pretty cold. We don't need ice for this one. We'll be all right. All right. All right. By the Should way, my wife is right out? off camera. I have she more cups. keeps waving oh, yeah, when perfect. we start pouring cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> I brought enough cups for two rounds. Nice. Um, here, we'll pour here. Best pass. guest one, ever. Best yeah, guest win. ever. This one gets you win. A, this one gets an ancho, an, an ancho salt, an ancho okay. chili yeah, salt rim. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, this is a mezcal cocktail, and mezcal is finally starting to catch on in the United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a completely underrated liquor. Um, Sorry oh. for the sound effects. Let me tell you about mezcal <laughs> tequila. That stuff tried to kill me when I was 19. Uh, uh, the, first time, the first time I drank mezcal was in high school, and it was rot gut, and it was terrible. That's what I did. And I didn't drink it again for... I got the worm, but I didn't want 15 it. 15 years. I got the worm, but I didn't want well, it. Well, you see, true. <laughs> yeah. Good mezcal doesn't have a worm. This was total tourist mezcal. Exactly. Good I mezcal. I got asked to house it while my best friend's parents went to China for a year. And the last thing they said was, here's the key to the liquor cabinet. Drink with some dignity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was said, Louisiana family. Yes, yeah. sir. And we broke the first thing we got out was the bottle of mezcal. And, oh. and it's terrible. We shot it with some Now, cool how is your mezcal readings. better than that? Uh, we, mezcal now, good mezcal, right. is produced uh, by small producers in different villages around the Oaxaca area, all over the state of Oaxaca, and in some places around It's indigenous Oaxaca. to Oaxaca, though? Uh, I, you know what? Mezcal predates tequila. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, wow. Technically, you could call tequila a form of mezcal that is made solely with blue agave. Okay. okay. Uh, mezcal is made with the mague plant, which is comes has a hundred and different twenty subspecies. A cacti. It's a cacti, oh. and it has a hundred and twenty different forms, uh, and different villages use different plants. Okay. They're all agave, but mezcal doesn't have to be technically be made with the same type of plant like tequila does. Okay. 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 Uh, and so different villages use different versions of the the mague plant to make their certain kind of mezcal uh but it always comes out with this really great smoky flavor that's its signature what does the smoke come from in mezcal it's how they cook that's what i remember it's how they cook the pina which is the center the center of the plant is so like the same thing with an agave exactly right it has these big spiny leaves that come that shoot out and they chop that and the hemidor is the person who chops all the leaves off and you end up with what they call pina which means pineapple in spanish because it looks exactly like a pineapple. Interesting. It's okay. this big, round, bulbous oh. thing. Uh, and then they roast that off and crush it to get the juice out, and that's what they ferment and then distill to make either tequila or mezcal. Huh. Now let me ask you a question. The, the, uh, the drinks that come from a certain region, do they pair better with the food that comes from that region or not necessarily? Uh, I guess not necessarily, but you think on a general basis they would right. because they're producing – that type of liquor or those drink things kind of go together culturally so yeah. you think it would but L- last time i was in oaxaca uh oh my god i'm gonna forget the name of the restaurant please don't pitiona <laughs> nice Piti- P- pitiona <laughs> is the name of the restaurant I'm and it's in Dave. it's in central uh oaxaca in old town and i did a nine course mezcal tasting menu and this is a, a high-end restaurant uh last time i was in oaxaca was last summer and i made a point of not eating any street food which almost killed me. Why? I wanted to eat at the high-end restaurants. I okay. wanted to see what they were doing. I was only there for a week. Right. So if you can eat street food, then there's no room left for the going to go in the high-end places. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and you've and done I, that before, like I said, so to, okay. it almost killed me not <laughs> being able to eat street food. 
Uh, Cheers. What's the toast Cheers. in uh, Mexico, by the way? Yeah. Salud. Uh, there's a bunch of them. Salud. Give me one. Uh, buen provecho. Buen that, that's more like. Yeah, come over here, Saber. Buen provecho. Saber, get on the. Uh, really um, means more like bon appetit than it does. Okay. Give us a toast. That's it. He did. Okay. Buen provecho. <laughs> now we drink. Okay, so this is made with. That uh, is smoky, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's right back to college. This right is there. made with Del Mage <laughs> oh, Vita. So good. Uh, fresh tamarind drink. Uh, lime. Uh, and an ancho chili uh, rim. That's wonderful. Unbelievable. That's really, delicious. really. Uh, you don't find cocktails. I mean, we're known a city known for our cocktails, and that has cocktail was invented in New Orleans. A great deal of depth and uh, flavor profile that, that you can't find anywhere yeah, else. Yeah, and, right. and I really, you know, I really wanted to put a mezcal cocktail. That's so good. And we do mezcal flights as well to try to educate people. Right. It can be a little difficult to sell huh. uh, because. And tell us the name of this again. Uh, this is the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. The good, ah, the bad. Ah. Yeah, I don't think you told us before. That's amazing. <laughs> That's good. I That's like that. brilliant. That's a good movie choice for this. <laughs> oh, nice. But it's got a lot to it, and, you know, it, it, it totally redeems my 19-year-old experience. I, <laughs> I can drink mezcal exactly again. Exactly right. We have a, we're putting a, a shrimp dish on the menu where I actually marinate the shrimp in mezcal. Okay. And it Come on. Without, without grilling it over an open fire or putting it into a smoker, it really gives the shrimp – this really beautiful smoky so you've got flavor. Smoke there. Exactly right. Yeah, exactly smoking. right. Brilliant. Is it time yet? We, we don't have our producer. He's in Israel. Okay. Is it? It's time for off the menu. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This is the uh, this is the part of the segment where we ask you something that you uh, you know it's a little bit off off the menu. So um, okay. All right. So maybe I'll start with you. Uh, oh, I'm going to give you an easy one. I'll just give you softball. Okay, one person. You got one person to cook for and have and share a meal with. Who would that be? Any oh, any person living? Any person living on the planet. You know, I'd really like to blow the socks off of Rick Bayless. Really, tell us about that. Uh, he has been a huge influence on on what I do, and I finally got to go to Chicago this last Christmas and eat in all of his restaurants. Wow! <laughs> How many are there? He actually has three restaurants that are right next door to each other. <laughs> Choco, Topo Labampo, and Frontera Grill. And I've wanted, for 10 years, I've wanted to go eat at his restaurant. Uh, and I hope if he ever is in New Orleans, he'll find his way into Del Fuego. And not only find his way there, but enjoy the food. That would literally blow my mind. <laughs> oh, if he's happening. listening, if you're listening. <laughs> Rick, you better get down here. Yeah, he has <laughs> 8 billion people to pick from, and he picked you of 8 billion people. <laughs> Come on. How can you not go hang out with him now? If you hear this or you're, you're a friend of him, go tell him this. That's really, that's major. He is, yeah. a, is a huge influence on me. Wow, that's, 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 that's good. He's to hear. awesome. Yeah, I've asked that a couple times. I've never, you know, it's funny. I've never had anybody on the show answer with a, with a food person. What's really? your favorite Yeah, it's always like a politician or rock star or yeah. something like that. Yeah. You know, it, he's, we, uh, Shannon and I sat down at Topo Labampo, which is his white tablecloth restaurant. And the really cool thing is he'll have three or four tasting menus going at the same time. And both people at the table don't have to order the same tasting menu. Uh, so we ordered two separate tasting menus <laughs> and got to eat 14 different dishes. Wow. And he is re- he's That's taking a night he's out. taking <laughs> That's crazy. he's taking Mexican food to a level that I've never seen it really? taken to. Wow. Well, Cuz most people don't cons- most people don't it's think street, of, of street white food. tablecloth restaurants yeah. and Mexican food. Right. But you go to Mexico City, Oaxaca, Puebla, there are chefs down there that are blowing it out of the water so and that doing takes you really to, like, inventive food. the next food. question, what you do you have that kind of intention here in New, New Orleans? Oh, I would like to think that I'm as skilled as Rick Bayless, but I, it's probably not As true. far as white table you know, <laughs> for Mexican, though. Um, I, I don't know. It's been so rare. Santa I don't Fe know. was one, I think. Wasn't Santa there? Fe and, and, and Coyoacan. Uh, yeah, right. I myself would be very skeptical if it weren't just amazing. but you know. And that's the problem. Yeah. I, that's the problem. I think at this juncture i i don't think so five yeah. years down the road i think I it's I coming know. i think oh, i wow. think it, yeah, i think it's in your head I think we're finally getting oh i've thought about i it. think it's coming you need to ask debbie a, a uh, off the menu question though okay what's you your ready? workout regime oh, oh, good have one. oh my god <laughs> she looks very fit of i'm all saying things. you know 
Um, sort of blessed with the metabolism until I got over 40, but I don't exercise. I have not. You don't exercise? Blessed. No, I walk my dog. Does that count? You yeah. walk your dog. That yeah. counts. Well, That's Ray has a great one. It's not fair. Ray, That's all Ray I do. Walks. It's not That's fair. It. I just walk everywhere. That's all I do. Yeah. I don't yeah. work out at all. all I've adopted that. I walk now a block from my house <laughs> to, my, to my office. And sometimes and I walk across the street. <laughs> it, is, uh, it, is, it is not fair. Well, I mean, you know, it's a lot of carbs and drinks. To me, it's like carbs are it. And, you know, being a. You know, I'm on my bar. feet a lot. Now I'm moving. But you do it. You know, rule, it's all right. Which is don't talk about losing weight while you're at a food show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to have about 30 pounds of food after yeah. this is over. He's got me so hungry right now talking about this stuff. <laughs> um, I just ate there and it was awesome. That's your so workout routine. Seriously, nothing. Just I seriously the dog. do not work out. Wow, that's I impressive. should. I, it might come. Oh, yeah. Just do whatever you're doing. No. Do, do you know Gus at Thanks, the gym guys. across the street? I, I see Gus all the time. I, I don't know yeah. Gus. Oh, you, must have he, some, you must have some muscle steroid head freaks coming out they're of place, constantly right? going by we have a cavalcade <laughs> that goes he, came by. In, he came in to eat the other day yeah and i hope he doesn't mind me no saying no, this we're all he, he had a ceviche appetizer then ate two burritos and had dessert and wow i, I was speechless and he, he said i only eat one meal a day and i said well apparently he makes it but he did. He's like, you can come over and work out whenever you want. And I'm like, oh, nice, uh, nice. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, put the workout on, question. Put that on you know, my Ray list. told me to prepare a, a, a question. Off the, you know, is that the off the menu question? Off the menu question. Yeah, I feel and like that I was, was for you, but one. then you know, you, you look like you deserved it more. So <laughs> <laughs> I would have had the same answer. And, right. And, and, I didn't and, think anybody and, here. And you would have believed me. Different, I would have. Yeah, different <laughs> results. <laughs> no offense, Dave, but. Uh, <laughs> well, you kind of, you know, you got Debbie, you got my bill. I'm, ro I'm, I'm rotund. <laughs> I'm rotund. <laughs> okay with it. No, this no, is the other question fine. I had off the menu, and I'm going to squeeze it in. Oh. At CIA, what were your favorite meals when you weren't working with everybody? Good your question. Student, quite, student. That's a great question. Wow. Good job. Wow. Man. Did you cook Mexican? Uh, whenever I could. Uh, they didn't, at that point, didn't have a Latin American uh, program. Come on. They did not. That's insane. I agree. Crazy. They had... You know, you, they had like a world cuisine class. Lame. Um, they had a regional American class where we learned how to make terrible gumbo. We're talking about mid nineties. Terrible gumbo. Tell me about <laughs> terrible the terrible gumbo. gumbo. <laughs> That's my new band name. Terrible, terrible gumbo. gumbo. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's a great band yeah, name. Yeah, that's it right there. It's a New Orleans band name. We won't, we won't go outside of New you Orleans. You know, the, 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 <laughs> the most fun kitchen to work at, I only went through half the program. I never went back. Okay. I was supposed to be in New Orleans for five months on an internship. It that, happens. Was, that was 16 Any years ago. Oh, okay, so wait, wait. So you did half the program. Day. You're supposed to take a break and do, it, do an internship as part of your program. Exactly right. And you never left. No, I never went back. That's it. That's great. I, I think that's back. amazing. Yeah, that's great. That's the way it ought to be. I, it was. You go. New Orleans is more important to me than oh, finishing the program. It literally took me about three days to that's realize oh, this wow. is where I wanted to be. Oh man. Love and it. and two of those days I had strep throat and I was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so really, we're down to one day that got you out of school. Uh, <laughs> that was me, man. My friend. An hour uh, in New Orleans, it was done. I was, I was sold so fast. Oh, really? Oh my, God. Yeah. oh my gosh. Okay, well, let's get back yeah. to Debbie about that in a minute. Yeah. My friend Steven Strajewski, who's chef owner at at. Kashan. Yeah. He and I have known each other for almost 20 years. <clears throat> we worked at Trevenier together, and he's the one that got me the job at Commander's Palace. Oh. So he's the one that picked me up at the airport when I arrived here. Come on. Oh, on wow. October 13th of 1998. Wow. And he was, this was, you know, pre 9 11. You could still walk up to the gate. He was sitting there with a 12 pack of Budweiser <laughs> tall boys. And I walked out of the There's airplane. There's no security like it no is now. I walked out of the airport. Now, yeah, I'm worried about my tags yeah. being out when I pull <laughs> up the airport. Strep throat, fever. I'm just like, Oh, you weren't kidding about this. I was like, throat. I okay. gotta go to your house. <laughs> He's like, no, we I'm have dead. to drive around the city. I'm like, here's two ah. jello shots and a daiquiri. <laughs> so he, <laughs> he, dro he drove me down Bourbon Street, and I'm just, I'm kind of leaning back in the seat, like, please take me to your house. <laughs> we went to the Half Moon. Oh, oh yes, wow. I love the Half Moon. <laughs> yeah, I worked. That was there. my first. You worked day. there? Yeah. You oh, did? Awesome. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, I worked there. I was pre Denise. Whoa! Really? Yeah. The Rolling Elf I were born at the Half Moon. Uh, yep, I was there. That's my, I guess my crew, it was and then also it was uh, it was a political king making place. Yes, yeah. it's been talked about for a long time yeah. about yes. how governors have been chosen there. Oh, back in the day, it was so, yeah. Yeah, it's political. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, Half Moon, and then and then Le Bon Ton. I was, you were at Le Bon Ton? Yes, I was at Le Bon Ton as yeah, well. Yeah, we were well acquainted I with I did a decade bon at Parasols. And Parasols. Come on. Oh, oh I've been everywhere. Wow. Yeah. Debbie, you're you're royalty. You to him? <laughs> yeah, stop. 
<laughs> Shut up, Dave. Did you bring any tacos? Because you need to go if you didn't. Why do you think I brought her? It's all about Dave, <laughs> yeah. damn it. Oh, man. So, yeah, I have just sorted up. Whoa, let's, let's, let's shift gears for a second because we've been, we've been uh, neglecting Debbie yeah. because it's Dave's okay. been so awesome. Absolutely. Now, wait a second. That's some in- incredible experiences. Oh, okay. my yeah. first so, job was f and Patio Bar. What? <laughs> Another great place. It's kind wow. of a two lane I was kid. the greedy Wait, girl in 91. You were what? I was the greedy girl. You were the greedy girl? I worked in the mean? kitchen at F&M Patio Bar. Wow, what does that mean? Yeah. Where are you from? There was a kitchen there. Oh, wait, okay, so you, you were from somewhere else. You came to Tulane for yeah. college. No, I never went to school. Where are you from? I came to visit and stayed. New England. Massachusetts, and you came to Connecticut. visit Massachusetts. I came to visit and How I stayed. How old were you when you came? I was 19. You were I 19 heard, yep. and you visited and you said, this is it. This is I'm it. I'm staying in New Orleans. So did you go back for a little while and then come? or No. You just never left? I never left. Come on. I go back in the summers for one week, and nice. that's it. Nice. Okay. So now you come here, and what's your first job? F&M Patio Bar. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, and Tio Pepe's Mexican Cantina, Whoa, oddly enough. Oh, it all comes yes. full hey, circle. Okay. Pulling out. Oh, we used to call it Teen Peepees. But, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> they were in the French Quarter and relocated uptown to Magazine Street. All right. Across from where the Sherwin Williams is now, it used to be the Salvation Army. And most of the bars you Next just to mentioned the are all uptown. Yeah, and then F and M Patio Bar. Yeah, and then Half Moon, well, Le Bon Ton, the first time Monaco I, the Bob. First Shout time out Monaco Bob. Was when you worked at Le Bon Ton. Yeah. What was the with drinking Steve. age when you yes, got with here? Yes, Steve Peterson. Yeah. With Steve rendezvous. Peterson. Shout out rendezvous. rendezvous. Oh, nice. What yeah, was yeah, the yeah, drinking age when you got here? 18. Yeah. 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 I, I'm so, going to tell you. And so, and yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so, so, so functionally, it was 13 yeah. in New Orleans, right? Yeah. right? yeah. I Because yeah. I was, it, it I was about I was, I was 14 when I came down here for the first time, and my grandfather took me to Paddo's and gave me like six Nobody cared. Yeah. It didn't matter. It did not matter back then. So have you noticed the difference between 18 and what it is now? Um, Maybe because I grew up not so much that I noticed the difference yeah but when I think back on those early years it was pretty bad <laughs> uh, F&M patio bar drinking age 18 two lane spring break Mardi Gates. Gras yeah. it was bad yeah yeah okay so how long were you at F&M patio bar uh, like a year and a half I guess okay, and then when you were long enough oh nice it was, okay. yeah, it was a run <laughs> okay that's an eternity I mean I, I, mean, I like that place too it's a fun place I don't know what it's it was fun back then, I mean you dance place, on the pool yeah. table yeah, 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 exactly you do lots of other things and right. yeah that hasn't is it coming changed. of that age place it hasn't changed a bit so have you only been a bartender pretty much the whole time in a bar owner yes I've been in the service industry since you look remarkably healthy for having guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the lighting. I here. mean, everybody's yes. just so <laughs> half their life. <laughs> Everybody looks. I mean, I'm 42, and I have not been a, ever served. By a the day way, 42 is life. the greatest age. It's a good uh, age. I'm in it right now too. I'm I'm there. I love it. I'm almost there. But Couldn't be more happy. Yet? I'm 41. Oh, I'm the old guy on the table. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. You don't look you have the best pompadour. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but wait a second. So. You've only you've only bartended or owned bars the whole time you've been yes. here, and you're not in rehab, and you look no. great, and yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And I still How drink do you almost maintain? every day. I mean, that's, <laughs> a, I mean, that's a question. You know, the food service industry and in the, in the bar industry, and especially in New Orleans, but anywhere, is 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 it like a it's a gauntlet. I mean, it's just like it <laughs> it's ages, notorious. You it know, ages people so yeah, fast. I mean, right. how do you? Good Without times. going like into really bad like illegal statements, yeah. how, how do you maintain? <laughs> like, um, I will say good times and lots of sleep. That's lots it. Of That's sleep. it. You know what? And walking the, the dog. And you know walking the dog. He asked me to put together Thomas, questions for uh, for you Army. guys, and I saw him, and I had uh, what's your uh, workout regime, and I saw you, and I said, when do you sleep? That's me. Oh. a lot every day. Yeah. <laughs> So, so wait, now the bar's open till. I when? mean, as, not as much as I would if I could. But bar's yeah. open till what? Four, five? What is it? Yeah, we do uh, minimum four weekends is six. So you're not staying up till four or five? No, no I'm no. more the day girl. Okay, okay. Yeah, but you so you got people always. you trust and. No, you probably. I was late night. Yeah, my you, clock is late night. Have you? Have you? Yeah, my clock is na- late night. As yours is. Oh, I come alive too, at yeah. midnight. Yeah. Oh. I do too, but I, I I try to go to sleep by. Dylan, 10. I'm crushed to announce, but we have to wrap up here. Oh, no. We are running out of time. Already? We didn't even oh, get to tacos. tacos. No, I want to talk more tell Edit about. out my stuff and let's go for some tacos. <laughs> <laughs> can we come back? I'm serious. You, another time, yeah. Yeah, we'll right. definitely get you and back. And we can have tacos? We can have tacos next yeah, time. Okay. Yeah, I think we need to do that. Well, listen. Um, Dylan and I agree, and that's the reason why I you know, invited Dylan along tonight when uh, yeah. when Margot uh, you know, dr- was, got sick. Um, 
We love Del Fuego. We oh, had one of the that. best meals. Very had good. a lot of meals in this town. And one of the best meals I've had was at Del Fuego. Really oh, I appreciate it. that. Absolutely fantastic. We've had some really great feedback, and, and, and people really seem to be enjoying the food. You guys so. You'd have to be insane if you're listening to this and you live anywhere near New Orleans not to go to Del Fuego's in the next week or two because it's, it's for the cocktails alone tonight. But, yeah. I mean, the food is amazing. Mole, um, fundido, everything. Yeah. That's, she had the mole today. Oh, so good. She had the, oh, she had the enchiladas. Duck enchiladas. Nice. Yes. You were smart in the ramp up, oh, too. Oh, we had a duck enchilada, I think, there. That's right. That was yeah, one we of the did. things I had. Yeah, yeah that was good. That was yeah. really good. I'm proud of that sauce. It took yeah. me a while. It's amazing. Well, Dave, it's a crime. I, I apologize that we didn't talk more about your menu and the oh, specifics that's, yeah, of it. that's okay. I've had a great but time. I think our listeners can tell from uh, your history lesson you gave us and the, the geography lesson of Mexico that they're going to a place that's serious about Mexican food. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. and has some serious fun. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute delight. Um, let's see. I'm doing Margot's part here, so just give me a second. I want to come back and meet Margot. Oh, yeah, you got to come back and meet Margot. <laughs> She's much better. Much yeah. better Get better, Margot. Margo. Yeah, exactly. And, and me, too. And um, probably more entertaining, too. Well, thanks so much for joining us tonight at Midnight Menu Plus One. We know that time in the restaurant business is a real precious commodity, So, and also in the bar business. So yes. thank you so much for taking the time to be with us tonight. Um, our special guest tonight at Midnight Menu Plus One was Dave Wright, and his Plus One was Debbie. You can find out more about Del Fuego and 45 Chop by following the links on our site, it's neworleans.com. And thanks tonight, too, again, for to uh, Petite Pet Care for loving care when you're not there, petitepetcare.com. Thanks also for our host, uh, Monkey Hill Bar on Magazine Street. At Monkey Hill, you can enjoy a five-hour happy hour. I don't know if uh, 45 Chop offers a five-hour happy hour, but you got a lot of the benefits there. But um, every weekend, every weekday from 3 to 8 p.m., and every Tuesday is Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Corona's Margaritas and Sangria specials plus $2 tacos at Monkey tacos? Hill Bar. They're doing it at Monkey Hill Bar. They have a kitchen back there. And, um, well, that's it for tonight's show. See you next time on Midnight Menu Plus One. Till then, I am Ray Kanata. I'm Dylan Turner. Who dat? <laughs> Good night. Dat? Midnight Menu Plus One is produced by Margot Moss, Grant Morris, and me, Ray Kanata. Our technical director is Chris Keogh. You can find photos from tonight's show on our website, itsneworleans.com. On itsneworleans.com, you can also check out our blog. You can listen to lots more episodes of Midnight Menu Plus One and our other shows, including Out to Lunch, Happy Hour, True to the Game, and Mindset. You can hook up with me and Margo anytime by following Midnight Menu Plus One on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And you can also Google Midnight Menu Plus One, and we come right up. The fabulous audio quality of this show is brought to us by PreSonus Audio. For more information about PreSonus recording equipment, go to PreSonus.com. Midnight Menu Plus One is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com. For all of us here at Midnight Menu Plus One, thanks for joining us. I'm Ray Kanata. And I'm Margot Moss. We look forward to seeing you back here next week on Midnight Menu Plus One. You know Labor Day signals the unofficial end of summer, but not the end of your outdoor projects. Lowe's helps you do it right and helps you save with Labor Day deals throughout the store. Shop now and get two bags of Stay Green Potty Mix for $12. And keep your lawn looking neat and trim with a Craftsman 2-Cycle 17-inch gas string trimmer, now $20 off at just $119. Whatever's still on your to-do list this Labor Day, do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. Offers valid through 828. Soil offer excludes Alaska and Hawaii, U.S. only.